Now, space exploration has brought with it numerous advances and changes to the world. To understand the complexity of space across the globe, various innovations and technologies have been developed to understand it. One of them being LIGO or the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory. In the United States, there are already two such observatories and our next report gets you the details. India's space odyssey continues to flourish. The country has established itself firmly as a space power. With homegrown technology, India's space agency, ISRO, has an enviable track record. It has successfully launched about 420 satellites from 34 different countries. India's Chandrayaan was the first mission to detect water on the moon. The country also entered the interplanetary realm by successfully launching Mangalayan as part of its Mars Orbiter mission. The mission cost $4.5 billion, which is 10 times less than a similar mission of NASA. And now India is embarking upon another ambitious project to explore the mysteries of our cosmos. The Narendra Modi government has given the go-ahead for what would be the country's biggest scientific facility. The Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory, India or LIGO India, will be built in Hengol district in Maharashtra. The $317 million project will join the ongoing global project to probe the universe by detecting and studying gravitational waves. Gravitational waves are ripples in the fabric of space and time, caused by violent processes such as black holes colliding. They were predicted by Albert Einstein more than a century ago, as part of his theory of general relativity. Einstein theorized that mass warps space and time through its gravitational force. In 2015, US-based LIGO finally confirmed with the first ever direct observation of gravitational waves. The facility consists of two identical underground detectors about 3,000 kilometers apart. LIGO India will be located about 450 kilometers east of Mumbai. The setup is expected to be completed by 2030. The state-of-the-art facility will aid in a more thorough knowledge of gravitational waves as well as other celestial phenomena like neutron stars and black holes. LIGO India is a sign that the country is at the forefront of taking on difficult scientific initiatives independently. It will also have huge spin-off benefits for the country's science and technology sector. Bureau Report, we on World is One. All right, now to help us understand as to what all of this, of course, means, we are joined in by Professor Tarun Sorodip, who is the director at the Raman Research Institute and also the former spokesperson of LIGO India. Professor, thank you very much indeed for joining us here in Beyond. Now, the question that I want to ask you is this. How big is the LIGO India gravitational wave detector, which is being built in the state of Maharashtra? The LIGO India observatory is a four-kilometer uh, laser interferometer. So it's four kilometers on each side in an L shaped. Uh, it's the same size as the LIGO detectors uh, in the US, which first detected the gravitational waves. And this is being built on 174 hectares of land uh, in the Hingole district of Maharashtra. All right, and also, Professor, please try help us understand, you know, as to what these gravitational waves are, you know, whose presence was in fact predicted by Albert Einstein. So, as uh, was mentioned, the 
uh, way gravity man uh, gravitation uh, manifests itself is through curvature of space caused by masses. So the fact that we see the Earth moving in a circular orbit is essentially Earth moving in a straight line but on a curved space-time. Mm -hmm. Now, Einstein, immediately after proposing this, uh, posed the question of what happens when the space-time fabric is perturbed by masses moving at enormous speeds, enormous masses moving at enormous speeds, and uh, came to the conclusion that there would be ripples that would be sent out from such an event. Uh, and these are gravitation waves. The way you observe them is uh, if a gravitational wave passes through, it stretches space uh, and uh, space in and in two orthogonal directions. It stretches and squeezes space alternately. So as a gravitational wave uh, passes by, I would be stretched in height, then next stretched in width, and back again. So that is the way it manifests itself. Uh, the way we detect that is to check how it changes the distance between mirrors placed four kilometers away from each other. All right, very interesting. And also, uh, Professor, this this is you know something that a lot, a lot of people don't understand. You know these very you know advanced concepts of physics and in terms of the curvature of space and time. Now, the question that I want to ask you is this: What kind of scientific discoveries? are expected from this cutting-edge observatory? So we have already started detecting uh, very, very energetic events in the universe. So black holes merging together produce enormous amount of energies. These are the most energetic events in the universe. We have seen neutron stars, mm -hmm. uh, which are solid objects made of uh, nuclear matter which collide into each other, and they also produce fireworks, which astronomers can follow up on. Mm -hmm. So what we hope to do is to observe the universe in a new, through a new medium, new right. messenger. Uh, we have been seeing the universe through light, and gravitational wave uh, gives you information which we can't get in light. Right. You know, the light that comes from these events is shrouded by a lot of matter that is surrounding that event, whereas these ones, give you the pure dynamics that is uh, operating at the heart of these astrophysical phenomena. All right. So we have been seeing merger of events, but there are many other sources that are expected. We, in fact, uh, hope to soon start detecting a continuous, uh, I mean, a background of many events which are we are unable to resolve as the sensitivity of the detectors go up. And we may often, you know, be surprised by new things that we have not even anticipated. And that's that's the whole fun of probing right. beyond what our current capability is. Absolutely indeed, Professor. And also, you know, it's, it's difficult for a common man to, in fact, understand as to what this observatory does. But try help us understand as to how this would be advantages for India and indeed the scientific community. Is this just scientific research for research purpose? Or is there some, you know, some everyday sort of a uh, you know uh, phenomena that this this could of course help improve for the people at large so what's very interesting about the LIGO detector it's the large-scale apparat physics apparatus but built upon concepts that we use in day-to-day -day life you know we have laser light we have mirrors reflecting so in fact uh, every uh, student in the college uh, in physics does uh, do this experiment, but on a tabletop scale. And when you want to do it on the scales that uh, LIGO seeks to do it and control uh, the, all the, what are called systematics, the uncertainties of you know, various things, uh, you need to really push on technological capabilities. So the laser is unique. It is extremely stable, uh, probably the most stable one. And then you have a mammoth uh, vacuum system through which the light goes because you can't have the light scattered through air molecules and spoil the experiment. You have extremely exquisite control systems with 100,000 channels. Of. So every aspect of uh, science and technology we see in various apparatuses are there, but they are at the cutting edge of what is currently feasible. So it's a four kilometer detector uh -huh. which is the most uh, precise 
detector for measuring uh, distances. Absolutely. And another part is we also are detecting such small disturbances of the mirror mm -hmm. that we are in the quantum regime. And wow. LIGO is harnessing that. And that has huge implications for our aspirations to tame quantum mechanics right. and use it for various applications. Absolutely, indeed. Professor Tarun Sorodeep, thank you very much indeed for joining us, taking time out and explaining to us the nitty-gritties of this phenomenal observatory. We'll, of course, wait and wait uh, for the many discoveries that perhaps would be made on the basis of this observatory that is presently being built in Maharashtra. Thank you very much indeed, Professor, for joining us here on Vyond. Thank you. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Vyond is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.